Hello, good people, and welcome to Finest Skills Hub. Here, we learn, we connect, and we grow. One of the exciting new additions in Excel in recent times is Python in Excel. It unlocks a lot of possibilities when it comes to analyzing data. Think of it this way. In the past, especially when it comes to analyzing sentiments, generating word cloud, and all those things, we actually struggled. But with Python in Excel, that is possible. In this case study, I want to show you how you can analyze survey responses. Maybe you sent out Google Forms, Microsoft Forms, and you want insights on the feedback that you have received. Let's get started in Excel, and I want to show you how you can take advantage of Python in Excel to get this done. Okay, so let's begin with this sample Google Form, basically to get feedback from our participants. We want to know First of all, what they think about our training, they will score us. So we'll take data on the agenda and also be interested in which social media platform they are generally active on. For this particular question, they can take as many as they want. We want to use this to create a word cloud using Python in Excel. Okay, so we'll ask for their age, which we are going to use to do a age distribution chart. Okay, and then this will help them also rank our training services. And then the final column or field here will ask them to give us their final words. And this is going to be text-based. Okay, so we've intentionally included this to help you see how we can use Python to analyze sentiments, right? So when you send out a form like this, usually the responses are collected in a spreadsheet. Okay, so this is dummy data we've generated for responses. Now we want to bring this response sheet to Excel. So this is Google Spreadsheet. I want to link it directly into Microsoft Excel and that can be done using Power Query. So right from here, what we want to do is you go and click on the share link. So I'll click on the share link in the top right corner. Now, when you click on the share link, you have to change the general access to anyone with a link. This is very important. Now, when this is done, you copy the link. Okay, so the link is copied now. Now, this link is what we are going to use in Excel under the data tab, get data. Okay, so usually in the data, get data tab, this is Power Query, which allows us to get access to different sources of data. In this case, we are using other sources, web. Okay, so when you click on web, it would require you to paste the link that you just copied in this URL, okay? But you don't paste that link you copied in here. We have to do some modification. So you can open an empty notepad and then paste that original link you copied in there. Now, the modification is pretty simple. We just need four keywords. So we have a spot, space, format, then the type of file we want, which is an Excel file, SLSX, and then an ID. Okay, so that is basically what you need to provide. But we we'll just need to put in some characters in between these four keywords. So between a spot and format, you bring in a question mark. Okay, then between format and then SLSX, you put in an equal to. And then between the file type and the ID, you put in a concatenation sign, which is the and sign. Then lastly, you put an equal sign after the ID. Okay, so this is the script that is going to be used to modify the original link. A spot, question mark, format equal to the file type SLSX. Then you bring a joiner, which is the concatenation, ID followed by an equal to. Now, right after the equal to, you need a unique code. That unique code is always attached in the link that you copied. So you find the unique code here, right after the forward slash after D, ending before the forward slash before edit, right? So between D and edit, you should see that unique code there. You can see it on my screen. So I'm going to copy this and then I'll paste it right after the equal sign. Okay, so this now completes my suffix. This is the script that I'm going to use to modify the original link. So once you have this, you can now copy and then replace in the original scripts you copied or the original link, 
the part that starts with edit. So this is the part that I'm going to replace starting from edit. I'll paste this. Okay. So at this point, this is what we are going to use. So you now copy the whole link, the modified version, control C, and then come to your Excel, paste this as the URL. So I'll go ahead and then paste this here and then click OK. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to load this into Power Query. When we go to Power Query, there are some changes that you may need to do. Maybe delete columns, merge, remove characters you don't need and all that. It depends on how your response sheet is looking. So from that, I get my form responses. As you can see, I have a preview here. Then I'll go to transform data. So I'll click on transform data to now give me access to the query. Okay, so this is my form responses. So if you look at it, there are some changes that we can do. Example, I can remove the timestamp. So I can right click and remove the timestamp. You also notice that there are some empty records. So consistent 45% empty records, which means they are just empty at the bottom. So I can now click on this filter icon and filter out the nouns. Okay. So once I do this, you now notice that the other columns are now filled in 100%. So I have my gender. I have my social media platform. I have my column on age. Ideally, you should assign the right data type. Then the final words, you can see that there's double quotes in there. I don't really need this, so I'm going to remove the double quotes. So I can right click and replace values. Okay, so I'll replace double quotes with a blank. So I'll click OK. So this is now my complete query. So once I've done the required transformation, I can now load it into Excel for my analysis. So I'll come to home then click on close and load. Okay, so what this will do is that it will use the default output, which is a table, and then dump the transform data as a table in my Excel workbook. So you can see on your screen that I have a table here for form responses, 107 records. So at this point, I can proceed and then do my analysis with Python. Now to do this, you need Copilot. Okay, so this is Copilot. It is available if you are using Microsoft 365. For you to know what license you are using, you can come to File, okay, come to Account, and here you see the license type that you have. So I'm currently using Microsoft 365 Apps for Enterprise. You normally see the Copilot icon here if you have access to it. So you can see that I have the icon here. Okay. So now that we have this, let's engage Copilot. So I'm going to close this query pane and then click on Copilot. Now it requires you to save this workbook in your OneDrive or SharePoint. So it has to be saved online so that you can turn on auto save. Okay, so I'm going to turn on auto save and then commit it to my OneDrive space, right? Then I'll name this test Python and click OK. Okay, so it will just load it and it will lead me to the suggested prompts that I can use. So I can write a formula, I can create keyboard shortcuts, I can create a box plot using Python and all that. These are prompts that you can start with. You can also view more prompts right here, okay? But what we want to do is just engage the Python feature. Now we can just use a prompt to activate what it calls the advanced data analysis feature. Okay, so I'm going to give the simple prompt. Analyze this data with Python. Okay, so I just want to see how it interprets this. So remember this is a table, so it already has access to the entire content in my table. So I'll just commit this. What I expect it to do is that because it's going to use Python, it would commit this to a data frame. Okay, so in a data frame, I can now ask subsequent questions on that data frame. So I have feedback here that it can use advanced analysis for that. It will create a new sheet for the results and then automatically write and insert Python formulas and then answer 
my prompt in multiple messages, which is exactly what I want. I also mentioned that it will start the advanced analysis. So I'm going to click on this and then click on start advanced analysis. Okay, so what it will do is that, as I mentioned, it will create that data frame, which is an important step. Okay, and then sometimes it will go ahead and do some exploratory data analysis and then give you some expected outputs. Okay, so I'll allow you to do all that and then I'll come in with my direct prompts. So as you can see, already it is visualizing the data, giving me gender distribution, social media, platform distribution and all that. There's also suggested prompts here, like analyze the correlation between age and training feedback, examine the relationship between gender and social media platform and all that. You can use this, okay, or come in with your generic prompts. So I've already copied some that I'm going to feed. Sometimes there's some randomness in the responses, but we can just manage that. So I'll start with one that I am particularly interested in, which is to create a word cloud on the social media platform engagement. You remember, when we're creating that form, we allow them to choose multiple options. We just basically want to see which platform stands out in a word cloud. Okay, so let's see what we get. So I'm going to commit this. Right, so it's now giving us the word cloud. In the past, this was quite difficult to do in Excel. So you now see that TikTok stands out, Facebook TikTok stands out. So it depends on the feedback that you are looking for. I'm sure this is going to even get better over time. Right. Now, another thing that I wanted us to pay attention to is sentiments. The last column of the form asks them to put in final words. Okay, so I created a prompt on that, which says, which is asking it to analyze the sentiment of the your final words column, okay, using a sentiment analysis library, right? So this is the prompt that I created. Let's see what it's able to give us. So it inserts it in a new worksheet, okay? I really was not interested in the numbers per se. So I'll go ahead and then ask you to visualize the sentiment scores using a bar plot. Let's see what we get. So it's going to work on this and then hopefully we can get something a bit easier to understand. Okay, so I have my bar plot inserted, which builds on the earlier computations that were done here. The basic interpretation here is that Generally, the participants were happy because the sentiments are usually concentrated in the positive areas beyond 0 0.2 onwards. Okay, so the negative sentiments, 0 0.4, most were neutral. But again, the highest point here, 0 0.4, means that generally there is a positive sentiment from that text column, right? So the point here is that beyond just using structured data and then maybe relying on the generic charts, you can actually now use Python to dig in deeper to get insights. As I mentioned, all these are objects or charts that you can now collect and use it to build that interactive dashboard that will give insights to your users. It's in its early stages, but I'm very sure it's going to get better over time. So if you haven't used this yet, time to activate your copilot to get more insights from your data. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you in the next video. If this video was helpful, and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.